What is a cold, low-level laser? What kind of treatment is that? Uh, well, first let me start with what is a laser. The acronym right. laser uh, is Light Amplification by Stimulated Emission Radiation. Um, Say that again. <laughs> light, light Amplification, mm -hmm. Amplifying Light, by Stimulated Emission of Radiation. Okay. And so there are two different types of lasers used in treatment. Mm -hmm. uh, one is the cold low-level laser, which you mentioned, and the other type would be a more high-power laser, which is used for surgeries and cutting and mm -hmm. things like that. So the cold low-level laser is called cold because it doesn't heat. You don't really, uh, when you apply the laser probe, you don't really feel it a whole lot. Mm -hmm. um, now, power of, the power outputs of laser vary. So some lasers you can feel heat and some you can't. But, um, the idea of the cold low-level laser is, is not to cut or burn, mm -hmm. but is to stimulate the cellular healing response. And um, so it is applied to an area, uh, it's you, you know, whatever area you want to treat. It's used to treat itises, so inflammation of whatever. So sinusitis, you'd apply it to the maxillary sinuses and the frontal sinuses, All right. and it lowers the inflammation that is occurring there. Uh, arthritis, you know, so you got achy joints, and this is probably one of the most common things I use it for. Um, you apply the laser right on the achy joints, and mm -hmm. it lowers the pain and inflammation in those areas. Um, carpal tunnel is another common oh. one I see, because it tends to have an effect to, again, lower the inflammation surrounding the nerve, and, um, um, but the but the effects of laser are such that it can be used for a lot of things. It's not a magic wand, it's not a cure-all, mm -hmm. okay. but it because of the mechanisms by which it works, mainly to decrease inflammation, pain, mm -hmm. and stimulate the local immune system, stimulate microcirculation or circulation in that area, it tends to have a healing effect on a lot of different things. Um, so, for instance, skin conditions. I was going to ask about um, that, the skin. A great indication for laser, because there's not many other good treatments mm -hmm. for this, is a diabetic foot ulcer. Oh. You know, diabetes patients, they start mm -hmm. to not be able to feel the pain in their feet. Uh, pain in their feet so they start to get ulcers mm -hmm. and you know I'd also probably give alpha lipoic acid because it's it helps with peripheral neuropathy but the laser is a good adjunctive tool because if you go around the edges of the wound it stimulates the healing response of that skin so that the wound uh, clears up and we have a few really good cases of this um, uh, with people who were fearing that they wouldn't be able to stand or walk around soon because they just kept developing these ulcers mm -hmm. and uh, with treatment they are, have gotten better. Now what I've noticed is it takes more frequent treatments um, to really affect it. I've tried you know, spacing treatments out quite a bit and doing them more frequently and it works a lot better uh, more frequently. But yeah, so things like skin, uh, even acne, um, mm -hmm. eczema, psoriasis, these rashes can be uh, helped because the laser is stimulating that healing response. Um, what about fibromyalgia with the muscles? Yeah, fibromyalgia is interesting. Um, it, because one of the mechanisms by which the laser works mm -hmm. is it, uh, if you think about the biochemistry involved in uh, the mitochondria, which is what produces uh, energy in our mm -hmm. body, um, there's a particular process by which the cells produce energy. And that process uh, depends on a series of events um, and they're called redox reactions. It involves reduction and oxidation. Mm -hmm. So they're basically uh, like lifting a book off the ground. You're giving it potential energy, and then mm -hmm. whenever you want to drop it, the energy is spent. Well, our body does the same thing by producing ATP. ATP is like the potential energy, and then our body can use it whenever it wants. And when you put laser light on an area, it actually uh, puts energy into the system so that the creation of ATP is more uh, optimal and mm -hmm. so you actually create more ATP and you have more potential energy and when you do that you have more energy available to help muscles relax oh. and in patients with fibromyalgia they have tight muscles mm -hmm. uh, they have these trigger points so laser can help trigger points but fibromyalgia patients also have uh, sometimes a poor ability to produce ATP and so it's kind of addressing two different things there um, so yeah, it can be helpful for fibromyalgia. Um, most helpful for arth arthritis, okay. carpal tunnel syndrome, sinusitis, anything with pain and inflammation. Uh, but yeah, fibromyalgia can get good responses as well. So you've had some real success with many conditions. 
Yeah, it's I, it's a tool I use a lot. It's not, not usually something I use exclusively by itself. I'm usually doing diet, lifestyle changes, herbs, mm -hmm. nutrition, etc. Um, but it's a good adjunctive tool that you know helps relieve pain, but also helps the underlying cause by assisting okay. the body and naturally healing that area. Um, so it's a tool I use a lot and I'm very excited about. It's been around for about 30 years. Mm -hmm. uh, there's over 2,500 studies done using laser and at least a hundred of those are good quality double-blind placebo-controlled trials for various conditions, uh, positive trials. Mm -hmm. um, and most of the negative trials have been people not knowing what they're doing, not knowing how to use it, using the wrong dose, etc. But if you know what you're doing, if you get the right dose, the right wavelength of laser mm -hmm. light, uh, it can really have a, a positive effect. Now people often ask me, well how is laser different than a regular light? I mean, can I just shine light on it? Mm -hmm. And it, part of it has to do with, for one, when you look at studies, they've compared both and the laser just seems to work better. But two, the difference is in penetration depth. The laser is able to penetrate much deeper than a regular, say, LED, which is a light mm -hmm. emitting diode, uh, a regular light bulb or anything like that. Um, and it has to do with the uh, mechanisms by which the laser is absorbed and, and how it interacts with the tissues, but it, it's able to penetrate much deeper and affect tissues uh, uh, deeper down and all the research seems to indicate that it works better than an LED. And one final question. If I get lasered, is it going to hurt? <laughs> no, it, if your practitioner is qualified, if they know oh, what they're doing, uh -huh. if they uh, use the right parameters, uh, there shouldn't be you shouldn't hardly feel a thing. Mm -hmm. um, there yeah. are very few side effects to laser. Occasionally some people get an initial pain response and that's mm. usually a positive thing because what it's doing is it's accelerating the healing process in the cells. So sometimes you have to go through a little inflammation mm -hmm. to get better. Um, but they're really, other than that, and that's temporary. There is no side effects. It doesn't hurt. It's safe. It's effective. Um, and there's very few contraindications. Um, but, you know, I would caution that a lot of people don't have adequate laser equipment or they um, haven't been adequately trained in using it properly. So sometimes I've come across people who say, oh, it didn't work for me, mm -hmm. but I'm able to still get responses in those people and you know, it just might have been they didn't get the right dose or mm -hmm. had good equipment. Thank you, Dr. Ferguson. Thank you.